I have a news report here from the early 1980s, and it really is just a slap in the face and a stark reminder of how devastating mistakes in foreign policy can be and how long those mistakes can last and how they can have an impact. Let's check it out. Inside the bright tented enclosure, 1,500 men waited. We were told that many of these men were Mujahideen who traveled from the border specially for this meeting. A mullah chanted some verses from the Quran concerning exiles. Mrs. Thatcher promised them an extra two million pounds worth of aid, and she made clear the West's support for the Afghan resistance fighters. I want to say that the hearts of the free world are with you, and with those of your countrymen who have stayed... And that gained her ringing shouts of support. That was Margaret Thatcher being praised by the Mujahideen and the Mujahideen praising Margaret Thatcher. And uh, they called them resistance fighters there. I'm sure you guys heard that. And uh, she said, the hearts of the free world are with you. In other words, the hearts of the free world are with the people who eventually became both the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. We funded them, we armed them, and they clearly became a monster. Now, this does need more context, because people look at that and go, whoa, 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 you can get a little Alex Jonesy conspiracy, and the whole point, you don't get it, we want ISIS, and we want it to exist, because of the, the Bilderbergs, and the Beelzebubs, and the Illuminati, and all the people, New World Order, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. Okay, no. Relax, breathe. So, uh... The reason they did it, the reason the West, including the United States, funded the Mujahideen is because at the time, the Mujahideen were fighting the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. So the Soviet Union was in Afghanistan, and, uh, you know, we thought, well, we got it's the Cold War, man, the Cold War, we got to defeat these terrible, godless communists. So we should do that by any means necessary, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So let's go fund and give weapons to religious fundamentalists in Afghanistan. And don't worry, it'll never come back to bite us in the ass. We just want to defeat the communists. So that's what we'll do is we'll arm them against the Soviet Union. And it's a great strategy. Totally. There's going to be no downsides to this. Except there was. <laughs> as we know. Now, the other important aspect of this is... You would think like, okay, got it. Learned our lesson. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't just de facto align with Islamists and jihadists because in your mind, there's a greater political end game and goal of this global chessboard against the Soviet Union today, Russia. But we're making that exact same mistake again today in Syria. So naturally, our, one of our biggest allies is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is ISIS that made it. They're a Wahhabi state. As I say, every time I bring up Saudi Arabia, they say all atheists are terrorists. They kill people for, they behead people for sorcery and witchcraft and apostasy and drug smuggling. Uh, and they've been spreading this poisonous ideology throughout the world. Turkey you know, same thing. Erdogan was in bed with ISIS. So we've aligned ourselves with these people and the groups that they support in Syria. We've armed some of those groups in Syria. And those groups have turned over their weapons to al-Nusra, which was al-Qaeda in Syria. So we've aligned ourselves with Islamists and jihadists in Syria to be against the Assad government. And understand that the Assad government, the reason why we're so opposed to them, and we've been for a while is that Assad is aligned with Iran, who's our enemy, and Assad is aligned with Russia, still our enemy. So instead of all of us coming together and saying, well, you know what, maybe the biggest threat that we should all focus on is ISIS and jihadists, and we can work together against them, we're still doing this weird enemy of my enemy is my friend, strange bedfellows alliances, where we're in bed with the wrong people. Now, again, it, you have to remember the lessons of history and how bad it was. I mean, the fact that we gave these guys money and armed them, and then it all came back to bite us in the ass. And just to show you, give you another stark example, look at this. 
This is The Independent in 1993 calling Osama bin Laden a freedom fighter on the road to peace. A fucking Western newspaper saying Osama bin Laden's a freedom fighter in 1993. All right, then here's another picture. Isn't that an amazing picture? Ronald Reagan with the Mujahideen in the White House! So, you know, I find it funny that oftentimes people who bring up the point that I'm bringing up right now, you're called a regressive. Because you're saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't fund radical Islam. Somehow that's regressive. No, I would say, who's really regressive? The people who don't acknowledge this, don't say it's bad, don't try to stop us from continuing to do it and get in bed with Islamists and jihadists. To me, Ronald Reagan is the ultimate regressive. He fucking armed and funded the Mujahideen. Margaret Thatcher, regressive. Armed and funded the Mujahideen. So, you know, we can learn and cut off the, the funds, cut off the arms to these horrific groups and crack down on them by freezing bank accounts, for example. There are real concrete steps to defeat radical Islam that don't involve bombing innocent Muslims. That crazy idea. That don't involve torture, which helps radicalize and helps them recruit more people. So, this is an important point. We need to acknowledge this point. And unfortunately, many people don't know the history of it. So, they don't want to discuss actual solutions. They'd rather just repeatedly blame Islam. Now understand, I am in the camp that says Islam is a major problem. The, the fundamentalist Islam, literalist Islam, is a major problem. It's a toxic ideology. It's a poisonous ideology. My point is, let's not fund that ideology. It seems like a relatively simple point, but some dense people don't get it.